Hey guys, Mo here. That's right, I'm able to play some GameCube games on the GameCube with an Xbox 360 controller, wirelessly. All it took was an Adreno, a USB host shield for the Adreno, a logic level converter, and the Xbox 360 USB wireless receiver. Now I sit quite far away from my television and I can't sit back and relax on my couch because the cable's too short. And I don't want to drag the GameCube closer to me as any sane person would. The GameCube is a lot safer on the TV unit than it would be on the ground, you know, with like running dogs or babies getting tangled up and, you know, hurting themselves. So I decided to look up wireless controllers for the GameCube on eBay and I searched for the WaveBird controller. But, you know, that was far too expensive. I'm not paying close to a couple of hundred dollars for a genuine one. And I'm hesitant to make a purchase of a non-branded one due to my concerns of reliability and quality. After the eBay search, I remembered that I actually solved this problem before without actually realizing it. When I first purchased the GameCube in 2019, after returning from Japan, I had to test it. I was excited to get my hands on it, but I had no controller. So I used a bit of ingenuity to be able to use the stuff I had lying around to interface with the GameCube. A 360 controller, the USB host shield, the wireless USB receiver, an Andrino, and a logic level converter. But I had no games, so all I did was muck around with the menu, you know, enter different settings, try to read the Japanese, couldn't. So once I was satisfied, I disassembled it and I packed away the project. However, over the years, I had lost the Adreno code, so I decided to try again. I wanted to be able to sit back, relax, and play some GameCube games. And at the same time, I wanted to be neat and tidy and have the actual GameCube hidden within the TV unit, so there's no need for pack up and I can easily just put my controller away and walk away. So I began to do my research on the topic again. After much research, I was able to find a Reddit post by a user named Rock, or also known as Simple Controllers. They created a smash box using an Adreno Mega, USB host shield, and some switches and buttons. Their Reddit post served as my initial guide for the project. I realized that I could also interact with the GameCube without a controller by using the Nintendo library created by Nico Hood. This library gives the ability to interact with the GameCube and to create a smash box. So instead of relying on buttons and switches to send commands to the GameCube, why not use a USB host shield along with an Xbox 360 USB wireless receiver to receive Xbox 360 controller button presses and send them to the GameCube as GameCube button presses. Now, this is the wire diagram. The logic level converter is needed to essentially convert the 5 volt data logic voltage from the pins to the GameCube's acceptable data logic voltage of 3.3 volts. You will also need a 1K resistor between 3.3 volts and 3.3 volts data logic pins. The diagram is almost identical to the one created by Frock Simple Controllers, except I added an additional wiring to allow the GameCube to power the Arduino. This way, there is no need for external power which means a much neater experience. Now there are a few bits and pieces that you actually need for the project. For example, this is the host shield that I'm using. I purchased mine from eBay quite a number of years ago, but I realized recently that it's still available. Now in order to use this host shield, you need to download the corresponding library known as the USB host shield 2.0. Now the library was created by Oleg, also known as Phyllis on GitHub, but the component that we're actually using from the USB host shield library was actually created and added onto the library by Christian Lausus. Now, special thanks to them for making this project actually possible. I also purchased this Xbox wireless receiver quite a number of years ago, and it obviously is still available to purchase. Now, I got the GameCube controller wiring straight from an old controller that didn't work, so I just ripped that straight out. It was from a fake controller. I needed the male end of the GameCube controller so that my Arduino can connect to the actual GameCube. Now, let's say you don't have or want to use an Xbox 360 controller for your project. Now, that's where the USB host shield library comes in handy. It also allows you to connect other controllers and devices by using a Bluetooth USB dongle. For example, a DualShock 4 controller as pictured above. You could easily just simplify my code in order to support this type of controller. Now this is the code of my project. It's simple. It relies on a series of if statements, such as if button A is pressed on the Xbox 360 controller, it emulates the GameCube button A command and sets pin A to equal to one while the button is pressed. You need two libraries for this code to work, the Nintendo library by Nico Hood and the USB host shield 2.0 library. Many thanks to them for providing such amazing libraries. The code is available on my GitHub page. You can find the link down below. 
feel free to comment and let me know what is your favorite GameCube game. The 360 joysticks are mapped to emulate the GameCube controller's joysticks, but I found that there may be some need of adjustments to achieve an accurate mapping. The joystick values for the Xbox 360 controller range from approximately negative 32,000 to positive 32,000, while the GameCube joystick values are between negative 210 to 210. A scaling factor may need to be implemented to map them more accurately. I have three different versions of the code on GitHub, each with minor tweaks. Try them all out, modify them as needed to suit your own needs. Let's see how the code works by testing it with some games. Now for the demonstration, first game I'm going to try out is Budokai 2. It works great. I can't even tell the difference between a wired controller and this wireless one. If there are any latencies, it's minimal. Maybe there is a better way to map the analog values of the 360 joystick to the GameCube controller, but after a while, I seem to have adapted to it. Through this project, I finally have a use for my old 360 controllers or any other controller I have lying around. Now, the best part of this is that if you're using Swiss to launch and play your games, I inserted a line of code that if you press the home button on the controller, it restarts the GameCube and sends you back to Swiss menu. How cool is that? However, there are some lingering issues. For example, with this Naruto game, even though I can navigate the menu, once I enter a battle or a fight, it just keeps pausing the menu, as if it's not detecting the controller. This issue also occurs in the first Budokai game, and I'm not sure what is actually causing this to happen. And for some games like Luigi's Mansion, it doesn't seem to detect the controller at all. I am unsure of the cause, again, but I'm making this project public in the hope that some out there may have a solution. It's a fun tinkering project with many potential uses. For example, I initially used it to diagnose and analyze whether a recently purchased GameCube required repairs. Overall, the project is functional and the wireless capabilities of the Xbox 360 controller offer convenience, flexibility and versatility. But there's still room for improvement, such as fine-tuning the sensitivity and mapping of the joysticks to better emulate the GameCube joysticks and addressing any remaining bugs. This project has opened up endless possibilities. For example, reusing those old controllers that are just collecting dust, or even just with the Nico Hood library, someone can create a controller for people with disabilities and or with limited mobility. It can also open up possibilities of unique gameplay challenges for Twitch. For example, imagine a streamer who is completing Paper Mario by using a toaster, a temperature sensor, and one of those dance mats. That's all I've got to say about that. Unfortunately, the project still has some bugs that are holding it back from reaching its full potential. Nonetheless, it still has countless uses and may serve as an inspiration for others to fix those bugs or to create something new. All the details about the project, including my GitHub page, can be found in the video's description below. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe and feel free to spread the word to other GameCube enthusiasts or others who may be interested in this project. Other like-minded individuals. Bye!